Welcome to Current Affairs at Copenhagen Suborbitals. What's happening right now in the Amateur Rocket Project, with the goal of launching a human being into space and bringing him safely back to Earth? Hosted by Jakob Larsen. Good evening, everyone, and welcome, welcome back to uh, the Copenhagen Suborbital's Rocket Shop. Um, we have a quite interesting topic here for tonight, and uh, we have uh, Mass Wilson here to, uh, to uh, explain a little about this. But first of all, uh, welcome, Mass, and uh, give us a little short introduction Thank you. to yourself. Yeah, my name is Mass Wilson, and I am a board member of Copenhagen Suborbital's, uh, and, and as as all of us in this organization, uh, I have actually a lot of roles. My main role here is that I handle all our press and publicity, but uh, secondarily I also do electronics in our electronics group. And uh, this year I am responsible for the, uh, the GPS and tracking systems of the Nixu 2 rocket. So that brings us naturally to this uh, to the, tonight's topic, which is the, uh, the FIDO system. Yeah. So what is the FIDO system? The FIDO system is basically a small computer application and really is it is, it is really just uh, in its simplest form a map where we can display all the data that is coming from the rocket, altitude, position and, and, and so forth. Um, but it's also a graphical uh, way of showing where the rocket actually is so that instead of uh, having to sit down at your computer and interpret a lot of uh, numbers just coming at you, we actually can, can draw some, some graphs so that we can see altitude and we can see where the rocket is. Yeah, and we're going to take a look at, the, at this application at a later point with, with the graphics and some demonstrations and so on. But just for tonight, we'll be looking more at, at the system itself and not so much what it, it looks like to us. Precisely. So um, we, I'd really like to dig into what is the core source of the information we get to the FIDO system. Yeah. What I have here is actually the GPS system of the Nexo rocket. And as you can see down here, it's very simple. It consists of a main computer board and it has a, 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 a GPS on top here. And actually on the bottom, you can't see it because it's underneath, there's a secondary GPS. So we're actually flying with two GPS systems. Each of these DPS receivers will have its own antenna, one on each side of the rocket, and they are monitoring and tracking the rocket as it flies. Those data are put into our telemetry stream and transmitted back to FIDO so that we can see at all times where the rocket is, both in altitude and in position on the map. And last year when we flew the Nexo 1 mission, I had the role of FIDO at the mission control and I was sitting there and, 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 and was looking at the, uh, at the screen and I was then sending out commands to all the, the, all the ships involved in, in the operation to tell them where the rocket was and to, to make sure that they all went where they were supposed to during the mission. So yeah, the, the primary uh, role of, or the primary purpose was to, to actually try to position the boats where this uh, rocket was supposedly coming down in a parachute? Precisely. Of course, we want to see where the rocket is at all times, but the main purpose is really when it's coming down, because it can come down, like we saw last year, very close to our ships, but in a nominal flight where we have uh, parachute deployment, uh, even with a small wind in the launch area, we can have both the, the nose cone and the rocket drifting far, quite far away from, from the launch site. So all the ships need to be directed in the in the in the correct direction and we also need to be able to beforehand actually before the rocket is coming down we need to deploy them in a certain direction so that we know that they are there once the rocket comes down so that they can salvage it quite fast yeah well it, it the part about the rocket coming down nearly on top of them we don't know how long it's going to float no precisely so precisely. Uh, it getting people in the water really fast is just a very high priority precisely and that is uh, kind of the topic tonight because this year we will introduce something new uh, this is not rocket science if you ask the electronics guys all over the world but what this year we have actually built a system where every boat in our fleet will have a small receiver uh, and our main control which kind of receiver just a, U a UHF UHF uh -huh, receiver yeah, yeah. And on the mission control ship, we will have a, a big transmitting antenna sending out signals to all the boat. The signals that are coming out to all the boats is actually the signal from the rocket's GPS system. 
and also a signal from the FIDO system so that I can tell the ships where to go and also they will know at any point in time where the rocket is related to themselves so that we don't have to call out on the radio to all the different ships but they can actually see in which direction and at what range the rocket will be yeah, well, it's, it, there's a predictive system trying to estimate the splashdown point, as far as yeah. I recall, all the way down from, from parachute deployment. Uh, there's a continuous update of, of where the splashdown Precisely. point is predicted. Because we are putting, we are putting uh, data like the wind speed, for example, into the system so that we both have the telemetry data coming down, but we also have a prediction saying, in a normal flight, when the parachute deploys in this altitude, we know or estimate that the rocket will drift in this direction and come down approximately here. But it's also continuously updated in a, in a dynamic model uh, from the parachute department. Yeah, it is. It is the parachute department. The parachute guys, they update the, the, the data continuously so that we know that where the rocket is. Mm. And of course, this is new. We have, we have not done this before. But the reason why we're developing it, developing it now with the, with the next year rocket, with the small rocket, is that this is something we need to have later on when we are flying big rockets. And of course, we need, as all the systems we build for our rockets, we need to test it thoroughly. Hmm. Well, and even if this wasn't just a, a, a giant leap in, in situational awareness, it's not only rocket telemetry and rocket position data that gets distributed around this network. Oh, no, no, uh, our, uh, and, and the, uh, this will also be a, a topic for, for a later update, but our telemetry and data network during the mission is actually quite advanced. All the data that we have from all the systems is actually distributed around between the, the launch platform and the mission control. Also all the ships, the ship positions. Yeah. So everyone will know where everyone is. Everyone will know where everyone is. We are both using uh, normal AIS data, mm -hmm. but we are also uh, using our own telemetry because uh, our own telemetry system, the one that I was talking about before, can actually transmit the data points much faster than, than the standard I AIS system can. And the AIS system is also not very suitable for small crafts? No, no, I, no, no, it, 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 it's not. It's not. We, need, we need a faster update and we need a, a more precise uh, location on the ships. Okay. Well, I'm very much looking forward to seeing this one uh, fly. Hopefully, we'll be there when the rocket comes down in a parachute this yeah, year. Yeah, so am I. It's going to be very, very interesting. Uh, and as I said, uh, this uh, GPS system uh, we are flying this year is actually a space, uh, space grade GPS donated from uh, the Danish company Gump Space, and we are very grateful for that. Uh, so hopefully, this will uh, fly and, and work flawlessly. We certainly hope so. Oh, we do. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mass. This was, uh, again, some valuable insight in, into what we're going to do this year on the water. We'll get back to the FIDO system and the FIDO yeah. role at some later point where we will be looking more into the application sort of, of, yeah. of the system. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, we'll uh, try something different today. Um, we've been having a, a, a lot of questions from, uh, from our fans and viewers around the world, and we're going to try something different this time. We're going to do a small uh, Q&A session where we take in a question which everyone can basically ask at uh, our new email address uh, for this, uh, these uh, Q&A sessions, which is it's very simple. It's simply ask at copsop.com. So we'll be looking at the first of these questions uh, very shortly and um, we'll give you an answer to, to what you're, you're trying to learn from us. Questions and answers in current affairs. One. Submit your questions for Copenhagen's Orbitals via email to ask at carpsop.com. Pauli Grammer asks, could you inform us the three astronaut candidates? This is actually a very interesting question and we get that a lot. Who is going to fly on our big rocket once we get to the manned flight? At the moment we have three official astronaut candidates. As you can see on our website we have Carsten Olsen, his daughter Anna Olsen and uh, Mass Steenfant who is the leader of our parachute group. Those are our official candidates. Who it is, who is going to fly the rocket, is, it's, it's, it's way too early to tell at this point. I mean a lot can change. We have planned at least two unmanned flight, flights of the speaker rocket before we put a man inside, obviously, because we need to, to make sure that all the hardware we built works so that it's safe enough for an astronaut to go in there. But also, 
there will be a lot of training. There will be a lot of uh, preparation of the astronaut candidate. We need to keep the rocket as light as possible. But also it's very important when you fly that you are in a very good physical shape. Because even though as an astronaut you don't, have really, you don't really have to do anything, you don't have to control everything, everything in the rocket will be controlled in a computer, you need to be able to withstand the, uh, all the g-forces and, and, and all, the, all the physical stress that is exerted to your body uh, once you fly. The astronauts need to be well trained, they need to be fit, they need to be prepared both, both physically and mentally because it's going to be, it's going to be uh, quite a rough uh, ride a suborbital flight in a such small rocket. There's not much uh, space in there. Basically, the astronaut will be sitting inside the speaker capsule in a slightly curled down cannonball position, and hopefully everything is ready. Hopefully we have, we have done a few test flights and we know everything and we can just push the button and the rocket will fly. But there can come situations where the astronaut uh, has to sit and wait in the, ca in the capsule while we are uh, fixing some problem, problem or, or, or making something ready uh, for the flight. I don't know because I haven't tried it, but sitting in a very small metal container on our launch ship in the middle of the Baltic Sea in the heat of the sun waiting for the rocket to fly must be a very, uh, a very stressful experience. So the astronaut needs to be ready and needs to be prepared on what's going to happen. So who is going to be our final astronaut, we don't know yet. But I'm sure that the three candidates that we currently have, they are all committed to doing so. And I'm also sure that eventually one of them will be the one flying into space. Okay, well, thank you very much for this, uh, this answer, Wilt, uh, Wilson. Um, this is entirely new. We tried this for the first time and, and we really hope you enjoyed it. So um, we'll be back soon enough with uh, another episode of Current Affairs. For further information about Copenhagen Suborbitals and our mission, please go to our YouTube channel as well as our homepage www.corpsart.com. As we're funded entirely by sponsors and donors, we need the support of our many fans to reach our goal of manned amateur spaceflight. You can support us by contributing through the support page.